You're listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. What up, what up, everybody? It's Al Mega, your host of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. And yes, we have another awesome creator lined up for you today. I mean, this person has been in the business. I mean, he is a graphic novel publisher. He is a screenplay writer. He is a director. He's a producer. He's a voice actor. Coño, why has this man not done? You know, let's bring him on. The one and only, the legend himself, Mr. Ken Mora. Wepa, what's up, hermano? How are you? <laughs> well, that's a, that's certainly an intro. Thank you, Al. No, no, thank you, brother, for coming on, man. Again, there's another legend, you know, the Costa Rican legend himself over here that's doing amazing stuff in comics, and I'm happy to have you on to, you know, hopefully get out our crusade for the Crusaders, you know, in tune with your project, what you've done, your journey. You know, I'm proud to have you on. So, again, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to chit-chat for a little bit. Oh, absolutely, and uh, I enjoy your podcast, The Energy and the Scope. Uh, where you examine, uh, you know, the big publishers, but you also give us indies uh, a voice and a chance. And I know I've discovered indies uh, listening to your cast, and I'm delighted well, to, to have thank you in the audience. Thank you, thank you. I mean, that's why we crusade for, you know, giving people different options, letting them know that the big two is not the end all and, and is all, you know? There, there's so much more in the world. Uh, of comic books, especially with creative publishers. I mean, you have a, a hit book yourself, which we'll get into in a moment. But let's just get a little bit about Ken. Where's Ken from? And, and, and tell us a little about, you know, your start like, of your fandom. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, like like other uh, creators uh, on your cast have uh, uh, mentioned, uh, it all started with uh, uh, drawing comics the Marvel way. Uh, when oh, I was wow, a another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. That book has touched everybody's lives. It's crazy. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it was the first inkling that um, there was a way to get there. And and the pros uh, showed you how. And, of course, uh, Stan Lee uh, uh, hyped it. And so I, I, I had the first edition. God, I wish oh. I'd have kept that. You know, when you're a kid, you don't you don't think. Uh, so who who got you that? Was it yourself? Uh, did you save the money? Or, or did your parents, an uncle, a titi? Who? Yeah, my my dad. Uh, now my my dad was a, a machinist, and uh, he made all right money. But you know, he wasn't. Uh, 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 he didn't have a lot to uh, to spare. But one thing he always does is he goes, "Champ, if there's ever a book you want, uh, it's yours. Just let me know what it is. And I'll, I'll I'll get it to you." Uh -huh. And uh, so we we uh, were in a bookstore, which is often something we did on weekends when I would see him. And uh, and I saw that, and I, I just fell in love with it, and it just uh, and so you know we we got that, and I was literally uh, and, and at that time this was uh, near Hollywood, and uh, there was this place called the the War Surplus on um, <sighs> gee just south of uh, it's still a surplus store, but mm -hmm. I remember one day there was a stack of, of just cheap tear off blank, uh, pads. And, um, I said, Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, I need some paper to draw my, my stuff on. So he bought me like 20 of these. Damn, oh. <laughs> that, that support. I yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I filled them up in a month. I mean, really, I, wow. I went through, uh, I was a huge, um, Kirby and, uh, and Kirby and Neil Adams were the gods for me. They, they were so different and so dynamic and um i would just you know uh, copy kirby and that's uh, funny and neil adams all the time it's funny you say that because uh, on kirby's 100th birthday a friend of mine and myself approached neil adams because he was tabling at a con uh -huh. mind you it's kirby's 100th birthday we we say, Mr. Adams, did you mind if we ask you a question about Adams? He said, go ahead. He said, okay, give me a moment. I hit record. My boy says, what did you think of, uh, of Jack Kirby's art? Neil Adams' first words were, I hated his fucking art. <laughs> I just turned off the record. I'm like, wow, we're here to celebrate Kirby, and you're like insulting him? <laughs> Jesus Christ, what's wrong with you? You know, I, I, I didn't even want to share that. I, I, I kind of got mad because Kirby, you know, is for me... Uh, 
big part of my comics growing up as well, you know, because I was, you know, I didn't start with Kirby, but then everything after the fact was the Kirby title that I had in my collection almost. It was like I was finding old stuff at the Grand Book Center. So my my Sergeant Furies and you know, a whole bunch of stuff like that that I had that was Kirby art. I was like, oh man. I mean, it was it's it's a treasure. I even had almost all of the new God runs on single issues at one point. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, well, my my first job, uh, well, you really couldn't call it a job, but I was such a comics fan. Uh, back then in Torrance, uh, there was this place called the Old Comic Vendor, and the the guy who ran it was Nick Scotto. Was and, he old? Uh, uh, he was. <laughs> he he was younger than I am now. I, I'm not. <laughs> that's for sure. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think he's still around. Uh, no. <laughs> that would make him really old now. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I I begged for a job, and I said, you know, I'll I'll work for free. I just want to look and hold and touch comics. And so he said, well, you know, I I got uh, I've got some things you can do. I, I can't pay you, but you know, I, I can give you these fanzines. And I go, yeah, deal, deal, yeah. So <laughs> so I started that. Uh, eventually, he employed me, and. Uh, uh, so I spent my formative days uh, doing that, and, and I remember um, the Fourth World comics coming out, and so I was able to uh, to collect, you know, New Gods for uh, Forever People, oh. and my favorite was Mister Miracle. Boy, I just absolutely love that. I guess it's because I figured, well, you know, I can't be a New God or anything like that, but I could grow up to be a Mister Miracle. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, that, that was it's based on Jim Steranko, and, and he loves saying that. I've seen him at shows. He puts his leg up on the table and talking about, yeah, did you know that that's modeled after me? <laughs> <laughs> awesome dude, man. I love him. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. So, okay, so you did your new God stuff, right? What, what else were early inspirations? I mean, Kirby. I mean, shit. There ain't no better inspiration than that. But yeah, uh, well, you know, for for Neil Adams, uh, of course, it, it was the art and. Uh, you know, nowadays you have so many excellent artists, but uh, but uh, Adams and Lee were just like that artistic quality notch above everybody else. And for me, I, I would just get hypnotized on the. Uh, I, I wouldn't even. I, I can't even tell you. I, I read much of the stories, but just like uh, the the hard traveling heroes uh, stuff, you know, I uh, I looked at it, but. Uh, I don't know that I read it, and I wasn't really into politics uh, at the time, being a kid. But boy, the the way he drew just hypnotized me, and I would just like copy everything I could. And when he went over, uh, he did his run on uh, the Avengers. Uh, mm. There were a couple of covers I would just draw over and over again, and uh, so he he's always been a hero of mine. And so when I uh, and the rest of my life. Basically, I knew I couldn't do work uh, as an artist, and I knew this because that's what people told me. Uh, so, wow. uh, I my my education career was always just like, well, you know, I can be a, a mechanical illustrator, maybe I can be an architect, uh, and so I would always dance back and forth between art and technology, um, and that put me in in unique places uh, as the computers came around. I, I got. Uh, God, I don't. I don't even know how I got the money for a Macintosh in 1984. Oh, whoa, it, whoa! You had one of those. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and it was almost like two thousand dollars, which was an indescribable sum. Yeah, that money. that was a used car. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, and you know, and they they weren't bargaining. It's not like you went to your computer shop and they just you know that that's the price. Uh, so. Yeah, this isn't uh, no Best Buy, no Circus City. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They're exactly. gone. You know, you couldn't haggle. Yeah, but uh, and you, you said know, Macintosh, my God, folks, you see that? This is how far back they, they weren't even Apple yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there was Apple, and, and they were known for the Apple II and for the you know the like the garage kits and stuff like that. Uh, uh, and so when that came out, you know, of course, I I remember seeing the uh, the uh, Macintosh commercial and being inspired by that, and then just uh, the demos at the stores of what it could do. Mm -hmm. thing outside the computer and drawing with it and at that time there was like mac paint and mac word and that was it uh and you know they didn't have hard drives everything everything was on these little hard uh, uh discs and uh uh but you know i got it and i, I taught myself uh, basic and uh and pascal and uh, um 
and then uh, you know uh, did the art. Uh, there was was it MacWorld? I forget what the first magazine was, but uh, I submitted uh, a, a work of art uh, that uh, got published, I think, in the third year of uh, really? Mac, MacWorld on the back. They had all this fan this fan art section. Was and that then, your first time you got published? Anything published? Yeah, yeah, that that was it. And and I wasn't wow. even thinking, you know, and it's just fan art, so there was no money involved, but just to get to get out there was was cool. Um, so I danced back and forth, and then you know, uh, if it weren't for you know the layoffs and recessions that forced me into other jobs, uh, those always um, spurred me to get closer and closer to the creative. And then uh, when I when I was forty, because I I had always been if I wasn't working two jobs, I would be studying at night, or working at night, and then the rest of the time, um, so study and work night mornings. Uh, there was a, a, a always a mix of that, but uh, I loved everything, and so I could never put enough together for a degree, and so when I was forty, I was going, you know, damn it, you know, I don't care what degree it is. Uh, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna you know go, get my my BA or my my BFA in, in something, wow. and uh, so I went back to Santa Monica College, uh, the uh, Community College of the Stars. Uh, <laughs> they they refer to it here in California, <laughs> and uh, I transferred there. Uh, an instructor, uh, Ron Davis, was was instrumental in getting me into uh, USC for my final two years, where I, I wow. had my BFA. Um. And uh, so from that, you know, I tried being a gallery artist for for a couple of years. It's it was a, such a tough row uh, to get into, a, a, such a tall, a tough and insular world to get into, that I ended up back um, in technology, doing uh, e-commerce uh, development, and then. Uh, but along the way, I found the story of Caravaggio. Uh, and he became a huge painting influence. My, my degree eventually was a BFA in fine arts um, and art history uh, uh, minor uh, with a painting emphasis. And his um, chiaroscuro uh, uh, style of painting was so enthralling. I had to, you know, and then the textbooks, they have like two paragraphs on the guy's uh, biography. So, uh, so someone said, oh, you know, there, some guy made a movie of his life, uh, if you want to see it. So I, I saw the movie uh, on Caravaggio by Derek Jarman, and God bless him, there are people who are nuts about this film. And, <laughs> really? And, and, but I just could not stand more than 10, 20 minutes of it, and I gave it a good few tries <laughs> because it was just so slow and so plodding, and I'd gone, and I learned about his biography a little bit more before I saw the film. I'm going. Wow, this guy is, this guy is uh, Cyrano de Bergerac. He's uh, he's uh, um, Kirk Douglas in Lust for Life. I mean, it was a, a huge scale movie. Uh, and then when I saw uh, what Jarman did, you know, a very artsy treatment of it. I'm going now. You know, somebody someday is going to tell his story the right way. And then a few, a couple of years later, it turned out to be me. So, uh, <laughs> wow! So and, I want... and, yeah, I mean, yeah, so you I... did you did something crazy there because you did that, and, and that opened up like a, a floodgates, huh? Yeah, I, I won uh, screenplay awards. I got an agent. I uh, got a film option. Uh, you know, I did the stupid thing that all people uh, do that... is I, I quit my day job, and then <laughs> and wow, then... bless, bro. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> And then, well, uh, so eventually, uh, you know, after the option expired and a couple more close calls, uh, uh, even getting to the point of talking to Johnny Depp's agent, because I was so, I was so desperate to, to get this done as a screenwriter, you don't do a producer's job. But I'm going, you know, if I can just get the script in the right person's hands, uh, you know, after, and I didn't know how good it was, but I, I, I won these awards. And so I figured it must be good. And then the the agent got it and he read it. And he goes, "Oh, it's really, really good." But you know, uh, do you, do you have a budget? And I, I didn't know what the answer to that question was. Uh, can you do a pay for play? Because uh, for eighty thousand, we can attach Johnny. Uh, but you know, it's got to be pay for play because nobody knows who you are and nobody knows this film director. He, so that's eighty up front. That's eighty up front, and whether anything happens or not. 
that eighty is gone. Whoa! And of course, I I had no. So I I went to my my director producer and I said, you know, uh, this is what he's telling me, and he says, ah, oh, I don't deal with agents, you know, to, you know, they're <laughs> paying the ass, and so the the option eventually expired, and I thought that was the end of it, you know, uh, but it kept nagging at me, and uh, along the way, I'd always been such a comic book fan, you know. I kind of rediscovered comic books with uh, comics like We Three and Black Hole. And these were not the comics I grew up with. These were other stories besides superheroes and horror. And I go, well, you know, there, there's really a spectrum of stories out there now um, in graphic novel format. And then um, when I discovered uh, Alex Robbins' um, Box Office Poison, Okay. I go, wow, you know, this, this is really uh, an independent film set to, uh, you know, the, the graphic novel format. I wonder if I could adapt my screenplay to, to this. And I kept thinking about it and uh, I'd visualize it and I, I could describe it. And then I looked up, well, how, how does a, a comic book script look? And, and uh, right about that time, uh, because now I was in the creative field, and I'm, uh, I, I managed uh, through another uh, uh, route to, to to come to know and uh, uh, be part of uh, Bill Plimpton's world, who is is Ooh. one of the uh, uh, great indie animators uh, of all time. The first one to hand draw an entire feature film by himself, Jeez. and now he's working on hand drawn featured film uh, ten, uh, and uh, I. Um, Actually, uh, his last film, uh, Revengeance, here we go. Uh, hey, I, I, I voiced a small role in that. Uh, and uh, uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Jim Lujan, actually co-wrote uh, and directed this, kind of co-directed this with Bill. And um, so I, I started thinking, you know, these visual media, they're, they're so so much like cousins uh, that, that I think I could actually adapt this. So I, I went and explored it. I, I held auditions for artists. And I said, you know, here, here's a, a two minute scene. I don't know, how, maybe it's two pages, maybe it's three, but I'm gonna hold an audition. And I hate um, asking people to do anything for me for free. So I said, you know, I, I locate these artists, uh, first like six of them. And I said, you know, here's a page rate I can afford. If you can afford, to work with this, this is the eventually the guy who 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 gets this. I'll do this and I'll commit to the whole series uh, with you. Um, at this page rate, uh, I'll pay you eighty percent up front, twenty percent when each issue is done. And uh, uh, I held auditions, and then I I four of them were just like standouts. Okay. And I go, oh my god, how am I going to choose between these four? Uh, and then I. I I started looking at uh, the, their works in depth and, and which one was capable of, you know, uh, rendering the, the period and had the dynamism and finally uh, uh, gave it to Cyrus Masarcia, uh, who did a fantastic job on the whole book. And, uh, and seriously, uh, uh, as a person who does multiple casts a day, I mean, you jumped into this both feet and both oh, feet yeah. and you jumped into it running. I did the same thing with four of my screenplays <laughs> whoa and then I, I i quickly figured out i've got to back off and concentrate on one so uh eventually it became uh, uh caravaggio a light before the darkness and uh and cyrus's work is so damn beautiful Oof. look at that gorgeous book how many pages is that bad boy because that's a thick one too uh the the story is 154 pages and for the trade paperback there's bonus material Including the story of uh, of the contribution of um, of Neil Adams uh, by way of sage advice in, in getting this uh, produced, so um, it, it was uh, such a fantastic experience. Uh, I had to slow down on the other three books, and now I'm on uh, Cage Birds, no issue one of which you can get on Amazon. Here's the uh, the floppy issue two. Oh, uh, nice. Is that the same artist from the previous uh, book that you work with or someone new? This was the runner-up. Uh, okay. Gian, Gianluca Testaverde. And I, I had such 
trouble choosing between the two. They said, okay, I'm gonna give it to Cyrus, but I'm gonna start another project, this other script that I had that's also done really well in competitions, Caged Birds, and you'll think you'll, you'll agree that the, the art on this is- That cover is gorgeous. Oh, look at that coloring too, son, huh? what? Yeah. And so, look at that. Uh, th this is an adult book, so I'm gonna try to, to, to edit it. <laughs> <laughs> That it's 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 about a uh, a young girl who's uh, who's romanced into uh, a relationship with a, a concert pianist in a, in exchange for his teaching her how to master her skills, uh, oh. and along the way she falls in love with his mistress. So it's oh. a very it's a very European cinema kind of uh, uh, story, uh, and so uh, that is on. Uh, I'm now remastering issue three, and uh, uh, so hopefully by the end of the year we'll have everything remastered and a trade paperback out by Valentine's Day of next year. Um, oh, nice, nice. And how how are these yeah. coming out? I mean, is it through a traditional publisher? Is it a crowdfunding? What are we doing for people to have access to these books? I mean, where where can we go? How can we support? What's what's going on? Uh, well, uh, initially it was all Kickstarter, and then I found this wonderful uh, publisher. Uh, Marcosia, who mm. uh, for those who who support Kickstarter um, projects, you'll you'll notice a lot of uh, of the heavier hitters and successful Kickstarters ha have gone on to this small UK publisher of indie um, graphic novels, and through through him, I got uh, international distribution through, of course, Amazon, but also uh, booksellers like Waterstones, big in the UK, and um, so the, this you can get at Amazon. Just, just uh, the quickest way is to Google um, Caravaggio manga, and then this will come up like second or second or third hit. Uh, so it, um, it, it, it comes up as manga. Yeah, uh, the, because of the way they characterize it on. Uh, oh, okay. Now, uh, since since I wrote the screenplay, interest in Caravaggio has mushroomed. So if you search for Caravaggio, I'm going to be like six pages in <laughs> so, so if you go caravaggio manga or you know type in the whole caravaggio a light before the darkness uh then you'll get right to it so, uh, but it's available kindle format for uh for 10 bucks 9.99 uh trade paperback for 24.99 and uh marcosi didn't have to do this but god bless them they uh they just uh sponsored my hardback edition Oh wow! Which which has a special cover. Thank you. And that's uh, you know, for for those who want something on their shelf, that's uh, thirty six ninety nine. Um, and you know, if you're if anybody listening to this show is going to shelve out the money for either the trade paperback or the hardcover, uh, just DM me at uh, at Bellafay Media at uh, Twitter or uh, Instagram or um, Facebook uh, to mention your show. And I will send you an autograph plate to put on the. Uh, oh, you on, hear on that, folks? Cover uh, of of the book, because uh, I I appreciate you, you know, helping me get the word out there, and it's a special thing, and I want to do special thing for. for uh, your thank you, I appreciate that again. But why wouldn't I want to talk to a book that looks this <laughs> gorgeous? About you know, you're an independent creator. You got stuff going on. You're an award winner. You're trying to make things pop off. So I'm always interested in that journey. You know, it's key. I mean, look at you. You're telling me, you know, you even got your degree after 40. How inspiring is that? I'm 46. You're making me want to go back to college right now. Shit. You know, that. yeah, let me get me, me a degree. It's yeah. amazing. I mean, that goes to, that's a testament to you, your spirit. You know, you're somebody, you're a go-getter. You're going to make things happen. You're going to make it pop off. You're not going to let nobody tell you no either. And I love that. That's, that's, that's right, the name. Yeah. That's the that's, nature of us too, as Latinos, you know. We, you yeah, know? you know uh, that's that's how my parents made it here. Uh, you know, my dad was a uh, 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 internationally ranked at one time uh, concert pianist. Wow! And uh, during during uh, Costa Rica's last uh, revolution, uh, where they uh, where they eventually kicked out uh, the military, and now the military has no no role in uh, in government there. Uh, you know, he got in some political. Uh, uh, jam at his uh, college, and so he's figuring I'll, I'll come to America, you know, and I'll, I'll stay there. But you know, uh, nobody respected uh, uh, Latin American uh, uh, educational credentials at that time, so he ended up being a 
Oh, and my, there we go. I don't drop. Uh, he ended up being a machinist. Uh, wow. And uh, uh, just working hard. My mother also uh, came to America. They actually met here, which pissed my grandma off because uh, my mom should have married an American as far as she was concerned. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those old schoolers think like that. So yeah, I get yeah. that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so her daughter comes here and, and finds another Costa Rican. So she's really, <laughs> she getting pissed off. <laughs> you, there was none here. You go over there and you find one from here. What the <laughs> hell is going on? Coño. That's too funny, though. That's the way it is. Uh, life is weird that way, right? Yeah, yeah. Things happen. It was meant yeah. to be, yo. There's a fate. I, I believe yeah. it. So I'm curious, though. How how did Marcosia walk into tomorrow's life? I mean, how did you guys even connect? Like, again, you said you're, it's a UK publisher, and you're here in the States, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. I so live how, in how did that connection happen? Um, well, you know, so, so two successful Kickstarter campaigns got Caravaggio out there. Uh, Cage Birds also kickstart a uh, successful Kickstarter campaign, but you know, like it's it's a weird genre for comedy, even weirder than <laughs> historical uh, fiction. Uh, that was less than successful. Now, I uh, I mean, it, it funded, but it wasn't the hit that Caravaggio was. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, I, I need some help. I, I got to have some international exposure, especially with Caravaggio, who who's well known in Europe, not so well known here in the states. So I just submitted queries, and uh, I believe the, um, the there was a publisher who said, you know, uh, we like it. It's it's not something we would carry, but I know this guy in the UK, uh, uh, Harry Marcos, and he's helping out a lot of indie publishers by by publishing their graphic novels and giving them distribution. So I sent it to Harry, and Harry came back, and he goes, you know, love to have uh, your book uh, on my roster, and we. We negotiated back and forth, uh, and uh, uh, so now I'm I'm happily in his stable along with uh, others. Uh, God, you know, uh, who are the other kickstarters? Uh, uh, people who support a geek girl will will recognize uh, uh, geek girl on his roster, and, and quite a few other kickstarters. Um, but it's been a great relationship so far, and uh, you know, at, at the same time, I, I kept entering competitions because. Mm. You know, this is how a screenwriter gets noticed. And I didn't know how to do that in the comic graphic novel world. Uh, and so uh, uh, I started in that arena and, you know, I've got uh, independent, um, independent publishers, independent, excellent public, independent publishing excellence award, okay. along with the screen, <laughs> Screencraft Cinematic Book Award and, uh, and, and quite a few finalist uh, placements as well. And uh, so uh, I haven't stopped just because I got a publisher, you know, getting it out there and, and doing whatever I can to get, you know, the, the word out there and, and separating my signal um, above the noise for people who like historical swashbuckling romance. It's also LGBT because he was uh, primarily a, a gay uh, 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 painter, but, you know, who who wasn't above using his sexuality to advance himself politically. Uh, was a fascinating character and it's full of intrigue and, and, and murder and, and uh, uh, redemption. It's a, a larger than life tale. And, and I, I was, um, I was happy that, that it got uh, so well received. Now I just got to get the, the word out there and, and get more people who might like that uh, to notice my book and, well, uh, you came here, and I hope all our crusaders that tune in and, and they need to listen on the podcast. All you got to do, I mean, if they wanted to get the book, they could go to Bayafe Media, right? Uh, yeah, I have, like, rather than deal with the e-commerce myself, I have links to uh, where you can buy it. Uh, so you, if you're in the UK, anywhere in Europe, or here in Canada or the United States, there's a link to Amazon. And uh, you can do that. Also, uh, Ken Mora links to BFA Media as well. So, uh, and you can get on my mailing list, and you can communicate with me there if you want your autograph book plate uh, uh, by mentioning yeah. Comic Crusaders. Uh, there so. you go, folks. You better mention that and get that now. <laughs> now, if, if, if the opportunity came once more around to say, okay, we want to make 
a show or, or, or a movie on this, like like from a streaming network or Netflix or Hulu. Was that something you 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 still consider doing? Uh yeah, you know I, oh, um, I dropped out there. Okay. Uh absolutely, yeah. Uh in fact I'm I'm going to and I don't know if uh if if my old agent um who rep my screenplays will do it, but I I'm going to try to get this to uh, Janusz Kaminski, who is Steven Spielberg's uh, cinematographer, uh, because I, I, I'm pretty sure uh, this would be a project that would catch his interest. You know, I, I, I imagine Scott Free Entertainment would also be uh, might also be interested. Uh, Scott Free Entertainment is that Miracle Man? <laughs> <laughs> What's the Miracle? They're they're, they're the they're the the folks behind uh, Gladiator. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Ridley Scott's uh, company. So yeah, you know, I'm I'm still hoping. If nothing ever happens on the movie front, though, I have to tell you, I am supremely satisfied with how this came out as a graphic novel. It's it's really uh, the fulfillment of a dream for me, and uh, and I will continue to 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 adapt my other screenplays and make new stories in the graphic novel format. Uh, hey, you know. so, like, what what does that arsenal look like? Are we talking two more books, three more books, or are we talking like? volumes well, well i've got uh so cage birds was my next screenplay i've got a because i'm a, an eclectic writer i don't stick to any one genre i've got a spoof of dirty hairy films called magnum farce uh <laughs> that's gonna come out uh, the art artist on that is claudio muñoz uh uh from argentina and i miss me some dirty harry so if you're gonna be messing around with dirty harry i gotta see this <laughs> Very good. And then uh, I've got another one uh, a little further out there called Ms. Valkyrie. It takes place in the future where a uh, a uh, a sexual hospice worker takes people uh, into the next life in a world where the rich can live forever, but the rest of us get to choose how we die. What? <laughs> that is some twisted business. I better get rich quick because I ain't choosing crap. <laughs> Whoa, that's gotta, that's a, that's a mind out, If you got to go out some way, <laughs> well, if I'm gonna, yeah, hey, if it's a sexual hospice, or whatever, then hey, take me out that way, please. <laughs> Let me fire off one more shot before I go, please. Um, <laughs> that's wild, man. I, that concept. Yeah, I could really see that, but I want to see the Magnum Forest because uh, that that is sounds hysterical. We need to make fun of those, that era. I mean, I love those movies. My wife will catch me watching a Clint movie, whether it's a Dirty Harry or some Outlaw Josie Wales. Or I'm I'm a big fan. I mean, I'm dying to see his new flick, The Cry Macho. I want to see what's up. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. he looks so old. It's like, oh my god, yo, please, Clint, man. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, re respect to the guy who at 91 is still out there making stuff. So. Acting, directing, I mean, yo, who at 91? That, that very few people in the world could say stuff like exactly. that. Like, yeah. I, so, I, 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 I pray to God we have that energy. That's right. And Quentin Tarantino needs to, to keep, to take notice. Because like Bill Maher said to him, hey, if Clint Eastwood is still out there making stuff, so can you. And Oh, yeah. And Tarantino keeps threatening to, uh, to retire, but... Uh, I hope he keeps he keeps going, and you know I, I'm 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 eager to see more stuff from uh, Robert Rodriguez, uh, uh, mm. the guy's magic. Uh, yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he is. I can't wait. Again, just watch the Billie Eilish. You know, he did a great job on that. And again, not that I was the biggest fan uh, 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 of that music. Again, you know, I'm an old head, so you know, I like, I like my '90s hip hop and. And my rock and my metal and my salsa and my bachata. Yes, I, I listen to everything. <laughs> my, you will go crazy in my car, you know. From one minute yeah. you're head banging and the next moment you're doing some salsa, you know. And the next minute you're doing Brooklyn hip hop, you would have a blast. It's, if you see my energy, it's even worse in the car. Yeah. I mean, I've had people in Florida stop at the red light, honk horns, and dance with me because they see me just jamming. <laughs> we, well, you know, the, uh, I I have. Um... I love all that stuff, uh, certainly, and also have this this weird thing for um, '60s and '70s uh, TV show uh, music, like Perry Mason. Uh, the theme to Perry Mason. Uh, that I don't care what generation you're from. That you know that theme absolutely rocks. And you know, and uh, the original I Spy uh, TV show also oh like just like blows it out of the water.
You would you gotta listen to my boy Full Blast Radio. Sometimes he goes on this thing where he starts playing theme songs from TV. So do you know where this one came from? You know, uh-huh. I mean, we, I remember there even being a debate about the greatest you know, theme sh- song for for a TV show. Um, and a lot of people with the Chaffer Sands, a lot of people love the good time stuff. And, and a lot of people were leaning towards the Norman Lear shows, you know, and, and those. What about you? What would you say is probably one of the, the, other than the Perry Mason, which is cool. We all know that one. But if yeah. you have a comedy uh, intro song, what would you say? Um, you know, just because it because it's got so much life and captured the 70s. And it was such a beautiful narrative intro into the show. Uh, the theme song for the Jeffersons, I oh, think. Yes, uh, yes, I love that absolutely one. Absolutely nails it, yeah. I love that one. But you know what I also love? What was uh, the All in the Family one? <laughs> I love oh, that yeah, one too. Yeah. That's a great one. Um, and my wife always makes me laugh. She said, "Well, when the Mash theme song came up, that's that's when I knew I had to go to bed." <laughs> <laughs> that's all she remembers that for. Oh, that was my bedtime song. So I had to go when that show came on. <laughs> that's crazy. We had good theme song. Like right now, we really don't have that. Yeah, no, they they don't uh, they don't really. Put everything into it like they used to yeah no no i mean, I mean that's why that's why i like the uh one of the things i love about the incredibles uh movies is that you know they they got that old big band studio jazz thing happening in the studio and they go let's like let's just blow this out of the water and just like yes uh, yes and, uh, that, yeah. that was the fantastic four movie we should have gotten <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. That's what the incredible is. Yo, Ken, you've been awesome, man. Uh, I, I love the energy, bro. You definitely are inspiring the hell out of me. I keep thinking about, you know, what the goals you achieved even after 40. It's like, shit. Yeah. It's yeah. never too late, man. You're a prime example of that. It's just to follow your passion, follow your heart. So yeah. I want and anybody you know, to. Uh, on, I'm ahead. an old man of 60 now. And, you know, the thing I, I've learned is. Didn't even uh, look your age, bro. Good on you. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. But, you know, uh, the time passes anyway. So take take a class here and there you know don't don't worry about the degree as time passes the stuff will all be there when you need it and then if, if it, it involves a uh, uh, a degree fine and if not you know nothing I learned is wasted anything from cut and paste in preschool to uh, you know economics in uh, in uh, college you know it all comes in handy eventually it, it yeah. really does you're absolutely right about that things that you wouldn't even believe so so true that's truth folks you but you know that's them preaching that's some real stuff so again <laughs> what we need to do i need you all to do follow crusaders is visit, follow ken on twitter and instagram bella fe me i love it it's just saying i'm gonna just say it in spanish i know a lot of people but it's bella fe no no bella fe i'm gonna go with my latino bella fe, bella fe sí, media i love it I, lo- I love that. And for folks that don't even know, Bella Fe is beautiful faith. I love it. I love that. And then right there, the website, Bella Fe Media or KenMora.com. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, so you show the support. I mean, Caravaggio, homies get- getting it done. And then we got the next stuff coming up. So support, support, support. Visit Marcosia. Visit the website. I mean, Ken is doing his thing. I appreciate you sharing your journey, your insights, and and, and that you know, a piece of advice is true. Never stop learning, folks. This is this is the journey, and it's not a short one, so might as well, you know, make the best of it. Right? Okay. Well, thank you, Al, and uh, keep doing it. You're beautiful, man. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Folks, you know what to do. The outro says it all. But, of course, make sure to visit our brand-new comic book store at comiccusaders.shop. And if you're looking for some awesome Comic Crusaders swag with all of our amazing mascots, visit comiccusaders.us. I'm Al Mugger with Ken Mora, and hasta la próxima. Wepa. Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today. 